Today we're going to look at electrode classifications for gas metal arc welding and gas tungsten arc welding filler metals. Um, this is the American Welding Society system and they use the same electrode classifications even though we're not actually carrying the current through on gas tungsten arc. Our first we're going to look at is carbon steel. We have an E that stands for electrode, an R for rod, this 70 is our tensile strength, once again in thousands of pounds per square inch. The S tells us it's a solid wire. And then the dash 6 is chemical composition. So that'll tell you things like how much deoxidizer's in it, if it's a particular alloy, and things like that. A couple things I want to point out on our S for short circuit and spray, that'll be an S. There is a type of wire called metal cord wire that you'll see a C there standing for composite and then when we have a flux core which we'll talk about later that'll have a T. Our gas metal arc and gas tungsten arc electrode classifications for stainless and aluminum are going to look something like this. We still have our E for electrode and our R for rod and then we're going to have an alloy for stainless it's going to be a three digit number in this case 308 so it's a 308 series filler metal and then this one has the dash L on it, which tells us it's low carbon. This one's 4043, and that's just the aluminum alloy. Usually that's four digits. The last thing we're going to look at is our flux cord wire electrode classification. And this one's a little different. We have E because it's electrode. That R is gone because we can't use it as a filler rod. And then this is where it starts getting different. We only have one digit for our tensile strength. So in this case, it's just a 7, but that still means 70,000 pounds of tensile strength, so it's in 10,000 pounds per square inch. Our next is the position position. It's either going to be a 0, which is flat groove, flat fillet, and horizontal fillet, or it'll be a 1, which is all position. Then we have our T for tubular wire, and then a dash and a number and some letters, and what that's going to tell you is composition of the wire, composition of the flux, um, it'll tell you if you're using mixed gas or CO2, it'll tell you what polarity to run it on, and it'll tell you if it is single pass or multi-pass, and you just look that up in your technical specifications from the supplier.